cast yesterday at the annual conservative conference ranking the group's top choices for their 2012 presidential candidates. Yes, we're talking 2012 here. Paul won with 31% beating out front runners like former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, who received 22%, and former GOP vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin, and in fourth, Minnesota Governor uh, Tim Pawlenty. Joining us now on the phone is Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, Congressman Paul, thank you very much for joining me once again. Thank you. Nice to be with you. I remember the last time we spoke, you were running for president, and here yeah. you are winning a straw poll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, since early signs had pointed to uh, Mitt Romney and Sarah Palin as the front runners in this year's Conservative Political Action Conference straw poll, did it come to any surprise to you that you won? I think so, because it seems like they're so much better known and they're really into this and uh, Romney was spending a lot of money. I mean, I knew we had a lot of support and I think it's all spontaneous and grassroots because it's coming from the college kids. I'm very much aware of this. I spend a lot of time on college campuses, so it's sort of a quiet campaign that we do, uh, campaigning for liberty, that is. You know, we're out there and trying to get people to understand a slightly different version of conservatism, you know, and it's across the board. So the college kids have responded very, very favorably, and that conference generally brings a lot of the young people there, and I think this year they had a, big, a bigger attendance than ever before. So I think a lot of those college kids uh, came out and supported me. So I was very pleased and uh, somewhat surprised. You have a birthday coming up, right? A birthday? Yeah. In August. Okay, and how old are you going to be? I will be, uh, say, 75. <laughs> 75 years old, and you have such a young demographic that follows you, and that is very rare, you have to admit, that, uh, you know, we have a president in office now who is very young, and that's what helped get him into office, is that he really did attract a lot of the uh, American college students. He had a huge following among 25-year-olds. Uh, mm -hmm. um, what is it about you that attracts young people? Well, you know, when I talk to the crowds, I point out and I compliment all the young people being interested in, uh, you know, personal liberty, but there's always some older people there, like myself, and I'll say, Yes, I, we must be young at heart, and mm -hmm. I think there's something to that, because the principles of liberty is a very young idea. We haven't had freedom for the individual much more than a couple hundred years. We've had this grand experiment and tremendous success. So when you, if you look at the course of history, thousands of years has generally been big government dictators, kings, and tyrants. And we've only had this little introduction, but young people respond to this in a very favorable manner. They like to be left alone personally when I talk about that a lot, and I think they like the uh, information I give them on a conservative foreign policy where we at one time uh, didn't want to be the policeman of the world. We just defended our country, but we weren't engaged in so many countries. They like that, and they like the idea of uh, economic conservatism, but the young people are very much aware that they're receiving the burden of this, and these right. deficits are frightening. So I think it's, it's a very young and new idea, and they have uh, responded very favorably. Right. I'm very pleased. Let's cut to the chase here, looking ahead to the 2012 presidential race. I asked some people on Twitter, because they're all watching you, a lot of young people on Twitter, <laughs> as you know. Uh, Justin Lafferty writes and wants to know, if you're considering running for president again, and if so, what do you feel America needs? needs changed to get back on track? Well, I'm not seriously thinking about 2012. That's <laughs> way off as far as I'm concerned. But I, I'm very confident that uh, we do need some changes, and we didn't get the changes, of course, with this administration. I think, I think the, the debt is going to do us all in. And that's the reason all this arguing, you know, whether it's medical care or whatever in Washington, <laughs> is that nobody wants to admit this country is bankrupt. Everybody wants something, but nobody's willing to cut. And I've taken the position you cut everything. You know, until you get your uh, budget back in order. If, you're, if we're as individuals and we're bankrupt, we have to spend less and, and work harder and pay down our debt. But a country, they will not admit this. Both conservatives and liberals, Republicans and Democrats, are, do not want to believe that this country is bankrupt. And we're putting right. all our pressure on the dollar. We think we can print money forever and get away with it. And uh, I, I think wanna, a lot of people know that we I can. only have about a minute left, and I want to get to a couple more, so if you could get through these quickly. Okay. Uh, DJT9000 writes, how will you cut the size of government and which programs should be scrapped if you were to be president today? 
we have to change the, the understanding of the role of government. We shouldn't be in the welfare business, and we shouldn't be in the warfare business. So everything is up for grabs. Government should be very limited, and I would uh, look to the Constitution. Follow the Constitution, you'll have all your answers. The Rex Report on Twitter asks for you to talk specifics on how you would deal with terrorism and viability of third parties. Well, terrorism is a vicious, vicious crime, and it has to be dealt with. And, of course, we, uh, anytime somebody gets murdered, we always ask what motivations are. If we don't ever come around to understanding the motivations behind terrorism, we can't solve the problem. And that has to do with our foreign policy. Occupation of foreign countries uh, does contribute significantly to the anger to motivate somebody to commit suicide and do a terrorist act against All right. Them. And finally, Huskers Bob writes me, and he wants to know, uh, what would you expect to come out of the health care summit with the president on the 25th? Not a whole lot there, but I predicted from the very beginning there will be more government involvement in health care. From the very beginning, he would never get his full package, and we are incrementalists, and we've been incrementally increasing the size of government and the government involvement in medical care, and I can predict with a certainty that uh, medical care in this country is not going to improve as long as we keep doing that. All right. Congressman Ron Paul, thank you very much, and congrats to you on your win. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Talk Bye -bye. to you later. Greg. Well, a big week coming up for Trouble Japanese Automaker Toyota.